Um, so hello, and a very warm welcome to everyone inside uh, this high-tech tent. And also a welcome to the people tuning in from the comfort of their own homes. I'm hoping they can see me on this camera that's mounted uh, there. My name is Dr. Guy Westwell. Uh, I'm here to give you a general overview of QMUL film studies. I've been at QM for around 15 years. Um, I've won awards for teaching. I've published a number of books on the American cinema, as well as being the co-author of the Oxford Dictionary of Film Studies. Uh, the Oxford Dictionary of Film Studies is something you should definitely buy, by the way. Obviously, I would say that. Um, I, you won't make me rich. I get about 40p for each one that you buy. But it is a completely wonderful work. Um, I'm also the admissions lead for film this year for 2021-2022. So if you have any issues related to joining the university, I'm the person to speak to. Uh, my email address is here. You can Google my name and you'll find my details online. You may have interacted with other people in up till now. I've just taken over in this role, so I'm the person to speak to uh, from here on in. So before we get to the way the degree works, I wanted to say a few words uh, by way of introduction to the department and the variety of areas that we cover. So we're a medium-sized team of teachers, researchers, and filmmakers. And as academics, our time is divided between both teaching and research. This means that in addition to teaching students, we're required to develop our expertise in our chosen field and to publish articles and books and undertake public engagement work. This slide shows some of the books written uh, by uh, members of the department. We teach across the film program generally, as well as focusing on our own research specialisms. So I'm the US cinema um, expert in the department. I teach a history of US cinema and a final year module on contemporary uh, US cinema. Our teaching and our research, research influence and inform one another. Our discussions with students often lead to new ideas and new perspectives on our subject of research. And also the other way around, we design courses focused on our research. So we believe this makes for a really dynamic learning environment. You guys are invited to join us as we inquire into uh, what film is. Here are three recently published books. Um, Ashwin Devasundaran has edited a collection on Indian cinema beyond Bollywood. And Ashwin is a world expert in bringing attention to and describing uh, the vitality of Indian independent cinema. Lucy Bolton recently published a book um, focused on contemporary cinema, seen through the lens of the philosophy of Iris Murdoch. And Kiki Yu uh, has published a book uh, titled Myself on Camera, which examines first-person documentary filmmaking in what she calls an individualizing China, so a China which is subject to uh, considerable uh, change and accelerating change. I think just as, as three, I mean, I picked them fairly randomly, but I think they speak nicely to the department's cosmopolitan, inclusive and wide ranging interests. The degree program allows students to gain experience in film production. And my colleague Sasha will say more about this after uh, the break. Um, overseeing this part of the degree are a dedicated team of filmmakers. On the slide are a few examples of award-winning films made by uh, these members of staff. Uh, Stephen Eastwood's film Island um, is a poetic evocation of the experience of terminal illness and hospice care. Yasmin Feder's uh, film Queens of Syria tells the story of 50 Syrian women refugees living in Jordan who came together to create and perform their own version of The Trojan Women, a timeless Greek tra tragedy about the plight of women in war. And Sasha's wonderful film, Solarium, explores the symbolic and political resonance of sinkholes that are causing Israel's dead seashores to collapse, uh, damaging roads and tourist sites. Those are just a few. Hmm. This uh, isn't quite playing as I'd hoped, because I think it switched the background from black to white. Um, but it's not crucial. So I, I'm, I'm hoping that I've very quickly conveyed that we're a strong team of talented people who know our stuff and who care deeply about research and teaching. But what do we actually teach? So the BA Film Studies takes you on a journey from casual film appreciation or cinephilia um, through to rigorous, well-informed film analysis, film writing, and filmmaking. As you study film at QM, you'll be asked to seek answers to the following questions. What, 
that this is a, 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 list, a, a longish list of questions, but it's by no means definitive. And I hope the questions just in trying to sort of figure them through, even in the instant, begin to activate in your mind uh, some of the terrain uh, that we'll be covering on the degree. So how, how have the world's film theorists and critics written and, and thought about the cinema? How can their ideas shape our sense of cinema past and present? How does the cinema work with our perceptual and mental apparatus? How do we see and hear and feel and think? And how can the cinema help us better understand these processes? We might think of how uh, memory functions something like flashbacks uh, in a film, for example. Or we might think about how persistence of vision works. We're shown roughly 20, 24 still images a second. We mistakenly believe that they're moving. Uh, why do we go to cinema? Why does it feel so good uh, to go to the cinema? Why do we find it pleasurable to be terrified when we're watching horror films? Why do we need constant reassurance offered by romantic comedies? The favorite director among first-year male film students, we run polls each year on the first year about which films they like, is Quentin Tarantino. Why do so many people like his films to the point of obsession? Why do they take so much pleasure in what are, what are increasingly just a series of revenge narratives, very liberal uh, revenge narratives? What's going on there? Hmm. We'll ask you to consider where the cinema came from. The same technology that powered the first movie cameras also powered the typewriter, the sewing machine, and the machine gun. All significant inventions of the 19th century, all inventions connected to industrialization uh, and colonialism. Understanding film requires us to look back at this history and ask how does this history and film history more specifically inform the present? How did it develop differently across the world? Is film an art? Debate rages about this. Critics seem to agree um, that Citizen Kane and or Vertigo are among the greatest films ever made. Are they the best? What would be the criteria be? What would the criteria be for making this uh, claim? What films would you put in your top ten, and why? If film is li is an art, who is the painter, the writer? Um, is it the director? That's certainly not a straightforward uh, question to answer. In terms of the film industry, we must remember that films are also commodities. Should we consider films as something like sports shoes or hamburgers with box office, box office income or streaming subscriptions their defining feature? The degree also raises questions of identity. How does the cinema help us decide who we are? Who do we identify with on screen? How does what we see on screen shape what we think? I believe that the cinema does, uh, not in a simplistic way, but through perhaps a slow process of repetition and reiteration. For example, film's role in shaping a certain view of women or LGBT people and so on. Acting and performance are also central to the cinema. Um, why are film stars, for example, so important to so many people? It's said that fans of uh, Rudolf Valentino uh, is appearing here. Um, went as far as to commit suicide upon hearing of his death um, in the 1920s. What role does technology play? When we go to the cinema, are we going to experience a story well told, or are we going to see the magic of special effects? How has streaming, not to mention COVID, disrupted the film industry? It's moved cinema uh, into the home. It's possibly also collapsed the difference between film and television. So answering these kinds of questions, and they play out and are answered differently by different approaches taken um, on the program, um, requires and also helps shape supple, sharp thinkers. Um, thinkers who can work in an interdisciplinary way, engaging physiology, philosophy, psychology, sociology, politics, and cultural studies, and then putting their ideas into practice in their own written work and film work. This is challenging. Film studies is a challenging degree. But it really is the best kind of humanities degree imaginable because, of, imaginable because of its scope and scale and ambition. Alongside the talk degree, we also have a lively calendar of events run by our research centre, the Centre for Film and Ethics. Um, the Centre for Film and Ethics is something which directly chimes with that claim Queen Mary makes about inclusivity and caring about the world and wanting to make the world a better place. Um, and the Centre for Film and Ethics asks questions in that kind of framework 
um, about the cinema. We have two further research groups called Film Cultures and Film Philosophy. They hold regular events which are open to students. They're a great opportunity to socialize with staff and other students. Let me move to, I guess, the fine print, so to speak. I'll go quite quickly on this because much of this is what's happened. It, it raced forward. OK. Um, thank you. Um, yeah, much of this is online, and um, I'm happy to take questions on the end if you need to know more. To get your degree, you need to accrue 360 credits in total over three years. That's 120 credits a year. You gain these credits by taking modules, which are usually worth either 15 or 30 credits each. So generally, you take around six modules each year, usually divided equally across two semesters. So if you think of the year, you ha it's divided into two. You take three distinct courses um, in each of those semesters. They're a combination of compulsory and optional modules. Um, the compulsory modules are a spine, uh, which we require in order for everybody to be uh, bound in and well versed in the discipline and how the discipline works and the optionality allows you to tailor and customize what you study to your interests a bit more. The optionality becomes available from the second year on the film program and then expands massively in your final year. So your first, no, it's very excitable. Um, the first year um, will look something like this. So if you're a single honor student, you'll take a module called US Cinema Concepts and History. Um, I'm the convener of this module, and it runs across the whole year. Um, it basically tracks the rise and development of the cinema in the US from the turn of the 19th, 20th century through to the present day. And it looks at both Hollywood uh, studio filmmaking, um, avant-garde filmmaking, and independent filmmaking. Alongside that, you uh, introduce to and explore certain key concepts in film studies, narrative, mise-en-scene, cinematography, editing, and so on. You bring that to bear on the historical case study. In parallel with this, you uh, take a module called Approaches and Analysis. This looks at three key areas, um, authorship, debates, um, genre, and stardom. And it looks at those debates in relation to a much more cosmopolitan and searching um, a series of examples of the cinema from around the world. So there's a sort of dialectic, um, um, a sparking off one another between US cinema and approaches. One is very concretely grounded in the national cinema. The other just ranges much more widely um, around the world. If you're a single honor student, so both of those run through the whole year. Uh, in the first semester, you take a script writing module. Um, this introduces you to the craft of script writing uh, for film, and you get a chance to have a go at writing your own script. In the second semester, production skills puts in the basics of the technical aspects of filmmaking. Mm -hmm. Joint honor students take the first two of those, and then they would also be taking um, the compulsory modules on their um, other program. It's really important for us to be completely clear at this stage that if you're a joint honor student, you get less opportunity to do the filmmaking, film production aspects of the program than the single honor students do. So there are some opportunities for joint honor students later in the degree to, to do a little bit of filmmaking. But if you really do care a lot about the filmmaking aspect, then you really ideally would be on the single honors program. There's a trade off to be um, had out there. So a weekly timetable for film students in the first year might look something like this. Um, so you're in the college every day except Wednesday. You're having a combination of lectures, um, will be something like this, and then smaller seminar groups working on topics. Um, there's some screenings, um, and some of the modules are sort of separated out. So you'd have screenings and a lecture at one point, and then a, a couple of days, and then a seminar. For, for um, concepts and history, I like to run everything in the whole day. So we start in the morning on Friday with a screening, have a lecture after lunch, and then we break out in the afternoon um, to have seminars. And then often there's students sort of find ways to socialize into the Friday evening if they wish. Mixed mode teaching next year might make some of this available or, or possibly all of it available remotely as well in addition to what's happening on campus. But almost all the planning we're doing at the moment is to have things happening on campus with a backup plan of also being available remotely. So it will look something like this, um, all being well. In the second year, um, in the second year um, 
There's a module called What is Cinema, which is compulsory for everybody, joint and single honors both. And this is a history of film theory, uh, which allows you to get a, a really solid understanding of the discipline of film studies and how it's developed over time and in different parts of the world. Uh, single honors also take a module called the Visual Essay, which looks at how film has been used essayistically um, by a range of different filmmakers and also has you making your own visual essay. And this is a, a proper practice theory module that combines the two um, approaches of the degree. I've put some indicative options here for level five for second year contemporary world cinemas, uh, a module focused on direction, um, differently able cinema looks at disability and cinema. There's another theory practice module which focuses on documentary. There's an, there's an option to extend your screenwriting skills um, a little more. And we have a module called Film Futures, which frames you thinking about possible future careers and embarking on a work placement. In the final year, there's no content, there's no, um, none of the uh, modules are uh, mandatory. Uh, they're all optional. We strongly encourage students to take a dissertation, to do a dissertation, and that can be done um, by written research in the research project or by film practice. Um, Sasha convenes the, the dissertation by film practice. There are also some sort of capstone filmmaking modules. Forms of film practice looks at, comes at things from a more avant-garde experimental film point of view. Creative production is about short fiction film. Uh, film for philosophy is very popular with students. And then most students take one of a number of contemporary national cinema focused modules. Um, we run them on US cinema, German cinema, French, British, Indian, or Chinese. And so there's a really nice broad span of modules that are focused very much on the contemporary moment uh, to, as you exit and potentially go into that world. The very best work from those contemporary cinema modules are published online. We're really proud of this Mapping Contemporary Cinema website. Um, so if you Google Mapping Contemporary Cinema, you can find examples of student work um, undertaken on those modules, um, longish accounts of single films, and then shortish accounts of interesting things happening at the moment uh, in the film world. Um, I think these really speak beautifully to how accomplished our students become as thinkers and writers, um, and people who are just able to observe what's happening in the world and articulate that uh, really nicely. Um, so I hope that you'll visit that and have a look. Two minutes. The PowerPoint is clearly trying to speed me up. Don't know. There are a few other um, modules that I just would flag up. So cognitive film theory, film archaeology, film and ethics, uh, uh, um, a script writing module focused on crime writing, modules on Japanese cinema um, and African cinema. We want our students to um, be in the world in an expansive way and an adventurous way. And so we like to accommodate um, study abroad where possible. And you can do that in two ways, via a four-year program where your third, the third year of your degree um, is overseas, or on the three-year program, you can go for a single semester in your second year. Uh, we have partnerships in Australia and New Zealand. Those might be pretty nice just at the moment. Uh, Singapore, Canada, South Korea, Taiwan, Hong Kong, India, and a number of partner institutions in the US. <clears throat> Besides being interesting and challenging and enjoyable in its own right, the film studies degree is a good first step on the path to a job in the film, television, and new media industries. The creative industries in the UK are multi-billion pound concerns, and they're currently expanding, even though COVID is causing some problems. It can also lead to a job in a number of other professions, including teaching, the law, marketing, advertising, journalism, and many, many more. A good way to look at this is to consider what our graduates have gone on to do. Oh my Lord. It seems to know that I'm behind time. <laughs> um, some of them are setting the world alight right now with wonderful film and television work. So this year, Stella Karadi won a BAFTA for Best Single Drama as the director of um, Sitting in Limbo, which shows the experience of those caught up in the Windrush scandal. It's making me feel sick. Um, I highly recommend the work of director Desiree Arkavan, especially her film, The Miseducation of Cameron Post. I think that's on Amazon Prime. 
Uh, Desiree often collaborates with C Cecilia Frugielle. Uh, they're seen together here. Another alumna who is a very successful film producer. Sorry about this. Matt Kay is establishing his reputation as a wonderfully socially conscious documentary filmmaker. His film Little Miss Sumo is on Netflix and is very humane, um, beautifully appointed film. And although it's not shouty a critique of the way sumo wrestling is orchestrated in Japan. Almost there. Why is it doing this, do you think? It's my electric personality. <laughs> Short circuiting the system. I want to stop there. Okay. Stay. Okay, good. Um, there are also some very successful alumni with less public profiles. Donya Maguire is the lead editor for ITN News. Marilena Peruti is a team producer at ITV. And Gentle is at the BBC, BBC as a creative after working successfully in advertising. Almost there. I could go on. We have head teachers, restaurant owners, Instagram influencers, travel writers. Here's a list of roles that I found by searching for Queen Mary in LinkedIn. Um, I can provide you with a long list of the fascinating and often well remunerated work currently un being undertaken by our graduates. <clears throat> so it's my hope that the film degree at EQM can be the first step for you to realize your goals and ambitions, whatever they may be. Um, I'll stop there so there's time for questions.